It is the year 2155. The people of Earth now travel between the stars. Following the sad lessons of the Little War, a unified Earth knew a century of golden peace and prosperity. A glorious dream dashed by the arrival of a hostile armada. Earth and her partners in the Alliance of Free Stars faced a monstrous adversary. The predatory Orquan. And its hierarchy of battle thralls. There were many great battles, yet Earth was losing. But then, far across space, an amazing discovery was made, deep beneath the surface of an alien world. An underground city, filled with the technological wonders of the Precursors, an ancient and powerful race who vanished a thousand centuries ago. But the Orquan swept through the nearby stars, stranding our scientific team here. Twenty years have passed. We have continued our research. We now know what the Precursors built here. It is a factory, a factory for building starships. But there are only enough materials to build the skeleton of one vessel. Yet that must be enough. Because you must pilot the vessel and return to Earth. And if the war with the Urquan still rages, fight for Earth and the Alliance. Well as you can. Okay, we're headed to Earth. Very slowly. Ever so slowly. Almost there. Almost there. Oh god, it's hard to control. Hard to control. Come on. Come on. We got this. We got this. There we go. There we go. There we go. Nope, nope, we missed. We missed. God! I need I need thrusters or something. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. I believe in me. I believe in the dream. Who's piloting the ship? They're fired. Attention, interloper. Heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now leaves to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. I don't really want to be punished though, but it was very good speech. Very good speech. Okay, we should probably do this quickly then. Quickly! Okay. Let's go. Earth looks different than I last remember. Isn't it supposed to be like blue? Oh. Attention unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the slave planet Earth. Hi. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak. Situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. 
We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat, are you the resupply vessel? Uh, 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 no, yes. The starship what? Never mind, look. We won't That's last much longer. Here's our situation. According to our oath of fealty to the Urquan, we must maintain the star base, but we have no space vessels of our own. And the shield prevents us from contacting Earth, so we're totally dependent on the Urquan supply vessels for everything we need up here. We know there's a hierarchy base on the surface of the moon, but we can't contact them. The Urquan were supposed to resupply the base at regular five-year intervals, but we haven't received anything in almost eight years. What we don't recycle, we can usually synthesize, but to do so, we need replacement radioactives for our generator energy cores. If you could bring us some radioactive elements, we can fabricate the cores ourselves. Are you willing to help us? Yeah, I can do that. I can help you out. Thanks. I'll make sure to mention this the next time I talk with our masters. I'm sure they will reward you. I'd rather you not mention it to them, actually, but okay. So we gotta go find radioactive stuff. What would be a good planet for that? Uh, Venus? Maybe some on Mars? I don't know. Uh, Mercury. Mercury probably be good, right? I'm sure there's some radioactive stuff there. Okay, scan the plant. Um, I, I mean that might be radioactive. Yes, I think it is. Oh, oh no! Come on, grab it, grab it, grab it. This is hard to control. Oh yes, that is uranium. Yes. Oh good, that was radioactive. Okay, let's go grab just stuff without dying. Oh god, there's earthquakes and fire too. There's earthquakes and fire! Yeah, let's go this way. Oh no. Oh yeah, that just killed half my crew. Okay, that was just bad. I want this little cluster here. Never mind. Oh god. Oh, come on. Okay, this uses 0.7 fuel per trip, so I can't make many of these. Okay, come on. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Oh no. Grab it. Sulfur. Oh no, that's not radioactive. Silver, that's not radioactive either. Okay, I think I got all the radioactive stuff. Uh, turn, turn, there we go. Okay, slowly forward. Slowly forward. Eh, eh, come on, we can make it. Aha! First try. Hopefully this is enough. Did you find any radioactive elements for our power cores? Yes, yes I did. We're initiating transfer of radioactives, Captain. Now as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores, there, that's much better. Power ratings are climbing, life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online, and I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of ship is that? Just who are you, Captain? As I said before, Star Control Science Mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a Star Control Officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. No, really. It was secret. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Androsynth Space. The Vela star system, yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? 
And why are you here? What do you want from us? Well, it's a funny story. Ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, a long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat, when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. Though day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years I spent so much of my time struggling down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Consider the consequences if you should fail. The Urquan won't just punish us here on the station. They'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. I'll make you a deal. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. Okay, I actually... I can do that. I can do that. Well, kind of. After the Urquan erected the slave shield around the Earth and established this space station, they decided to leave a contingent of combat ships close to the Earth to keep watch on our planet and confirm that they were obeying the Urquan slave laws. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm certain they're still out there on the surface of the moon because we can pick up a constant stream of alien broadcasts. Uh, then we shall go. Be careful, Captain. There are probably a dozen Spathy eluders and Ilrath Avengers down there on the lunar surface. I don't know why they haven't come after you yet, but when they do, you'd better have your weapons armed and your thrusters burning hot. Yeah, honestly, I didn't see that many ships. I, I'm pretty sure there are not, but we'll see, won't we? To the moon! Slowly turning. There we go. Okay, we got this. We got this. Eh. Meh. Turn. There we go. So, scan. Okay. Well, we got some minerals. One energy source. And some biologicals. Huh? What are the biologicals? Oh, they're just machines. Okay. Let's get all... Let's get the minerals, at least. Oh, oh. There we go. Okay, I'm having problems. I'm not used to controllers, what? Over here. There we go. Okay, we're getting we're getting these we're getting these minerals. We're getting these minerals. There we go. Up here, there we go. Come on. Oh my god, this is horrible so hard. Oh no! Oh wait, I didn't hurt me. Okay. Oh, I'm so worried. Okay, we got that. I am full. Never mind. Let's go. Ooh, there's the base. Report from surface, we have discovered an alien base and have explored it interior. The installation must have been abandoned many years ago, but the great care has been taken to make it appear active. Life support systems are functioning, fusion generators are at full output, and the robot construction vehicles have been programmed to roam the lunar surface, bulldozing moon dust into random piles, really. In addition, we have found the installation's hyperwave locked in transmitting mode, endlessly playing the same alien recording. Although we cannot translate the message, our Xenotech's Ensign Rigby believes the message is some, some kind of alert or mayday broadcast. The base is filled with useful material and equipment. We will scavenge as much as we can and bring it back aboard immediately. End of report. That's cool. So can I just lie and say I defeated like 20 ships? 
That'd be wrong, right? Yeah, that'd be wrong. That'd be wrong. You're right. You're right. Have you dealt with the base yet? <laughs> we found the base abandoned. Uh, we attacked the moon base and completely destroyed it. <laughs> Darn! All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Long range sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Our computer identifies it as Ilrath, uh -oh. Avenger class. Oh crap. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Ow. Your best bet is to wait until you have point blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. Oh, this could be bad. By the fetid breath of the dark twin, Kazan, a human and an alien starship. Hi. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth, uh, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Well, thank you. Humans are prey animals, weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armed starship, and therefore in direct violation of the oath of fealty. I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery. No. When I present no. them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. I'd rather you not do that, actually. Uh, where'd you come from? It'd be my pleasure to blast you a star. Surrender, foul alien creature. Look, let's be reasonable. Can we coexist peacefully? Cool. Yeah, no. Nope, nope. And Surrender. An alien as your ship may be. Our sensors reveal how few weapons you have on board. Though this vessel is undercrewed and our cloak of darkness is non-functional, we still have more than enough power to kill you all. Uh, yeah, my ship is it does need some work. I agree. Okay, we will take in the Earth ship, and hopefully we won't die horribly in the first couple seconds because if they get too close, we're screwed. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I get Like that. Like that, if they get too close. Okay, can't get too close. Oh god, hopefully I have some weapons. Okay, we're far enough away. Come on, turn. Oh my god, it doesn't turn. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Oh, we got it, we got it. What a beautiful sight, Captain! I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco! Cool! Well, I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We you. may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're gonna try. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? Uh, then we're gonna proceed to kick some butt, yeah! <laughs> yes, Captain. We'll do just that. By the way, Captain, I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. And since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? Uh, the new Alliance of Free Stars. Uh, the United Federation of Worlds. I like that. I like that. That has a familiar ring to it. Yes, it Nonetheless, does. Nonetheless, we'll make it so. Thank the you. United Federation of Worlds. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the Starbase to take at least two weeks, so let's get to work. I don't like work. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. I have good news to report, Captain. Excellent. We have successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system, and as you can see, we've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. Thank you. Now, you should be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button. But there is a cost, however. The unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Oh, that's also, good. we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship, 
to refine Starship fuel, to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Okay. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions how this starbase works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. Um, yeah, let's offload my minerals I got. It's not a lot, but it's some. Um... Ooh, actually, it was a lot more than I thought. Cool. The more minerals you bring us, Captain, the faster we'll be able to tackle the Urquan. Excellent. Certainly, Captain. What do you need to know? Um, what do I want to know? Uh, historical data? Uh... What aspect of history, Captain? The war against the hierarchy... Uh, sure. What about the war? <laughs> um... Earth got involved late in the game in 2112 when the Chenjesu arrived in our solar system for the first time. So let's back up a few years to 2098 when the Chenjesu super-sensitive receivers detected a strange signal from the Ophiuchi constellation. Though even the Chenjesu didn't know it, it was the first sign of the Urquan's arrival. The Urquan, having detected the presence of many sentient species, were beaming out an exulting hunting cry. The first direct evidence of the Urquan's intent was the sudden conquest of the Umga, a solitary though not unfriendly species in the Orionis constellation. The Chenjesu, distraught by the invasion, were further angered when the Urquan turned their fleets on the hostile but weak Ilrath race. A hastily assembled defense force of Myrna Herman Chenjesu vessels turned the Urquan fleet aside, but the invader moved into spathy space, rapidly subjugating that race. Oops. With each new conquest, the Urquan fleet grew larger as it added slave vessels to its ranks. Earth joined the Chenjesu to form the Alliance of Free Stars at about the same time as the Androsynth stars fell to the Urquan Armada. Before the ink was dry on our agreement with the Chenjesu in 2116, a new race appeared in orbit around the moon and asked for admittance to the Alliance. It was the Arilu Lalile. The timing seemed unusual and the Arilu were definitely weird, looking like saucer men from Mars, but we were too busy cranking up our mothballed heavy industry that we really didn't pay it much attention at the time. Okay. Cool. The Urquan came roaring through Vux space and tried to push past the Indian Mira star systems. Their onslaught was barely repulsed and our counterattack made hardly a dent in the hierarchy forces, but we held the line. The Corward Front remained intact. Over the following ten years, there were many great battles between the combined Alliance Starfleet and the Urquan and their hierarchy of battle thralls. Then in 2134, a dramatic shift in the balance of power took place. This must have been about the time the science research mission was sent to the planet of Vela. Our fleets were pushed back from the Indy Mira line beyond Raynet. Mm -hmm. Holding Rigel caused grievously in Chenjesu forces, and the Urquan, recognizing this weakness, shifted to focus the brunt of their forces on Procyon. That was the last we heard from the Chenjesu and the Myrnaherm. Uh -oh. A few weeks later, waves of ships hit us from all directions. When Ceres Station, our outpost on the asteroid belt, fell to the hierarchy, we knew we were beaten, but we fought on anyway. Three days later, the Urquan vaporized our last remaining laser forts on the moon, and the dreadnoughts took up geosynchronous position above Rome, Moscow, Beijing, Tokyo, London, Buenos Aires, and Washington. We'd lost the war, and we knew it. But the Urquan decided to make it real clear. And that's why if you check any of our most recent maps, you won't find Buenos Aires. Oh. After the UN submitted their formal surrender, we were given a week to decide the nature of our servitude. The Urquan demanded that the decision be made through popular vote. When all the votes were tallied, Earth had chosen not to fight for the Urquan. We had become a fallow slave world. We were given a month to withdraw all of our people and equipment to Earth. Anyone or anything left off-planet would be destroyed after the shield went up. Then the Urquan broadcast an odd message. All objects of human construction more than 500 years old were to be abandoned. We didn't know what the Urquan meant until they moved their dreadnoughts into new orbital positions and opened fire on the surface with their fusion weapons. Ooh. In seconds, large sections of London, Paris, and other European cities were incinerated. At first, we thought they were going to annihilate us after all. And we noticed they were also striking such targets as the Giza Pyramids, the Parthenon in Athens, and Stonehenge. Huh. 
Curiously, the United States was almost untouched. The flaming rain lasted 40 hellish hours. It took days after we crawled from our smoldering shelters to realize what the Irkwan had done. Our new masters had targeted every building, monument, or other man-made construction older than 500 years and destroyed it. In those two days, we lost most of the history of mankind. In some cases, the Irkwan destroyed places we did not even suspect were significant. From their positions in orbit, the dreadnoughts blew away a kilometer of land in central Iraq, vaporized several targets in the Amazon rainforest, huh. punched a big hole through the Antarctic ice cap to destroy something deep under the surface, oh. and melted a broad swath of the ocean floor in the southeastern Atlantic. Oh. Then, just a couple of days later, Atlantis. the shield went up, and our contact with the outside world stopped. The next time I saw the stars was eight years ago, when I was transferred up here to be the new commander of this star base. Would you like any information on any other aspect of history? Um, I don't sure. think so. I'm good. Anything else? Um, no, Fine. I'm good now. Is there anything else you need? Um, nope. Goodbye. We shall await your return, Captain. That you shall. That you shall. I like being called Captain. It's fun. Anyway. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, shipyard. Yeah, I need... Can I get another ship? Actually, let's see what can I do here. Uh... Okay, yeah, let's fill up on crew. Okay, got yeah, filled up on crew. Okay, can I... No, no, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Oh, yes, that, that, okay, I figured it out. Oh, yes, I need, a, I need a ship. I need a ship. There we go. No, that's good. Okay, how do I do this again? Okay, let's get that. Let's do that. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah, I don't think I can fill up on fuel here. Okay, that's what... Okay. I think I have to fill up on fuel on Outfit Starship. There we go. Okay, yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay, that's what I was... Yeah, looking for fuel. Looking for fuel. Okay. Guess it's all fuel can have. Ooh, modules. Crew pod, storage bay, fuel tank, dynamo unit, and is that what appear to be it? Okay, got another fuel tank. And I can build weapons there. Ion bolt guns, okay. Crappy, crappy ion bolt guns. Turning thrusters, I'm gonna need some of those. Any mass thrusters, I'm gonna need some of those. And buy more landers, that's good. Okay, let us go explore and get minerals. See if we can find anything. Engage. Okay. Pluto! Okay, so we 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 went through all the rest of the plants. We just got I just got some um some minerals I didn't think it was important to show. Uh, so let's go here with Pluto. Let's see what we got here. Scan, please. <gasps> A purple! Oh, purple. I love purple. Purple is really, really expensive. Yes, even one. Even one is great. Even one is great. Oh, yes. Oh, and we got an energy reading. Oh, yeah. I'm armed and dangerous. Oh crap, that's a, that's a spathy ship. Ow! Made aid for surface. We have come under fire from an alien vessel we found hiding on the surface of Pluto. Captain, they killed 
Oh no! They killed one, two, three, four, five! Not Luigi! And all the all three of the, the the Lieberman twins. No! They killed eight people. But we have returned fire, but our stunner cannot penetrate the ship's hull armor. We are we are initiating emergency launch procedures. Enter transmission. Oh my god, no, they killed eight people, not the twin not not the Lieberman, no. Attention, a big mean hostile alien vessel hovering overhead in an obvious attack posture. Hi. This is Spotty Captain Fawiffle. I know you are going to torture me, so let's just get this over with right now. The coordinates of my home world, Spatiwa, are 241.6 by 368.7, and the ultra secret Spatty Cipher, which is known only by me and several billion other Spatty, is Happy Muffy Duffy. Happy Muffy Duffy? That little mistake with your landing vehicle. I was uh, so startled when it approached my vessel in a threatening manner that uh, my automated defense systems fired on it when it got too close. I hope nobody got hurt. You killed in my crew. Um, you come in peace when me no harm? I guess. Why not? Are you sure? Because well. your statement is often just a more polite way of saying Attention alien vessel, identify yourself or be destroyed! Is it? In any event, is it? I am Spotty Captain Fawiffle of the Void Ship Star Runner. Based here in this planetary system as part of the powerful Earth Tower, the Star Force. Which our masters, the Earth One, established here to make sure the Earthlings don't do anything tricky. Okay. So Our we're masters now. don't really keep us very well informed about their goings on. So that all we know is that immediately after the subjugation of the last alliance race, the Hut, I think, the Earth One gathered their dreadnoughts and departed toward the edge of the galaxy, commanding us to obey the slave laws or face their wrath when they returned. Oh, okay. So, what are you doing About here in Pluto? 20 years ago, this region of space was dominated by a loose confederation known as the Alliance of Free Stars, yeah, I know this. which was composed of the aliens native to these parts who did not want to be enslaved. That'd be they me. made a valiant effort against the superior Urquan forces. It even looked like they might miraculously defeat the combined Urquan Armada. Right up to the point at which the Urquan totally defeated, indeed annihilated them. Yeah. So what are you doing here on Pluto? We only know bits or and pieces of that. what happened to each race. For instance, when defeated, the Yahat joined the hierarchy as combat thralls, while really? the Cyrene chose to be slave shielded on a planet in the Bugsworth system. The Yahat actually chose to be, to be no, fighters. Oh that's my god. not right. I forget its name. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, we shall fix it. They were utterly wiped out in a <gasps> gigantic place of glory. No, those look cute little, little guys. The show 60 were half a feral, as you know, having been uplifted by the Yahat just a few decades before the start of the war. Yeah. Given their habit of detonating those suicidal so-called glory devices in combat, That's this true. came as no particular surprise to me when, upon the arrival of the Orphan Primary Task Force at their homeworld, the show 60 caused their sun to explode in a Holy colossal crap. supernova, destroying yeah, the entire planet. Not system. too shocking at all, actually. Incidentally, dozens of Earth uh huh. Me? You mean me? Personally? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, let me, I, I, you hear about you. I was born a poor green incrusting, the youngest child of a family of 18,487. My male parents had to work hard to support us, very hard. But each of my brothers and sisters and I tried to help out to make ends meet. The female parent was kind and sweet to all of us. Why, she won't even call me by name! She said, Forever! Forever, darling! Could you please watch the door? I hope someone's there! What a treat, a golden memory. I swiftly matured into a fine example of my species with my parents' assistance. 
achieved their independence by simply they pried me from the door jam and rolled me into the street. Thus Aww. prepared, I set out to make my fortune. I had great dreams in those days. Yes, great dreams. I knew that someday I would be vastly rich, wealthy enough to afford a large, well-fortified mansion. Surrounding my mansion would be vast tracts of land through which I could slide at any time I wished. Of course, one can never be too sure that there aren't monsters hiding just behind the next push. So I would climb trees to climb at regular, easy-to-reach intervals. And being a spotty of the world, I would know that some monsters climb trees, though often not well. So I would have my servants place in each tree a basket of perfect stones. Not too heavy, not too light, just the right size for throwing at monsters. I was thinking about what color the stones would be painted. I Move or magenta. When a vegetable cart came careening down the street outside my house and it left me unconscious. When I awoke, I was aboard the void ship Star Runner headed for Earth. Apparently, I had been out of my head for quite some time after the accident, and with the assistance of some kind of strangers, had been relieved of my funds and convinced to join the Navy, where I have been unpleasantly employed for the last 25 years. Oh, that's, that's fun, that's fun. When the Oricon Armada entered the system to subjugate formerly the Earthlings, the Oricon presented the humans with the standard slave options. Join the hierarchy as combat draws and retain some autonomy, including the right to travel through space, or become a fellow species and return to pre-atomic savagery on the surface of their homeworld, encased for all time beneath an impenetrable force shield. The humans chose the latter option, and so were swiftly imprisoned on the surface of Earth. But the Earth One didn't trust them to obey the restrictions. So, they chose a small group of hierarchy combat starships from the Inlet and Spartan fleets to create the so-called Earth Guard and station them at a base on Earth's moon. Makes sense. So tell me now, Originally, what are you doing here? We were stationed on Earth's moon, which made us spotty a bit uneasy, because with each passing day, we grew more and more worried about the sneaky Earthlings making a surprise attack. But the Inred kept telling us that it was impossible, since the Earthlings had no ships or weapons whatsoever. That made us feel a bit better, but when the Ilrath left, again we grew fearful, and decided to make a strategic redeployment to Mars. Later on we decided it would be prudent to relocate to Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, then later Saturn's moon, Titan, and finally here to Pluto. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, what happened to Ilrath? We uh, decided that if the Earthlings figured out we had abandoned the base on Luna, they would be more likely to try something sneaky. So, we rigged up some old service androids and ordered them to drive around on the lunar surface in bulldozers, endlessly pushing around the same piles of dirt. In addition, we connected the base's local radio transmitter to an audio Melnorme fun rum called Winky's Happy Night. Hoping they would think we were still there. Okay, okay, okay. But anyway, yeah. Over the past years, it became necessary to redeploy strategically some of our earth guard forces to our homeworld in case of a sudden surprise attack by a vicious, unrelenting alien race which we spotty call the ultimate evil. Yeah, that sounds ultimate evil. The Ilrath contingent were supposed to be the toughest ridge crest, er, uh, the most rigid flipper, no, ah uh, yes, the backbone of the Earth Guard Force. But they departed the system on the mass not long after the last Earthcon dreadnought vanished from this region of space. They claimed to have received a direct order from their gods of evil and darkness, who had grown dissatisfied with the Ilrath's passivity and wanted them to kill, or at least, torture someone soon. Okay. Personally, I believe they just got bored and went off to have some fun. That's possible, that's possible. Okay, um, yeah. Well, when they were pushing up into hyperspace 18 years ago, we asked them that very question, and I think they said something to the effect of... Real soon. 
No, oh, that sounds like him too, doesn't it? Yeah. Brethren, that is to say, scores, and perhaps even hundreds of my brethren stride through the corridors of this specially modified, super efficient, mass destruction oriented starship, which could lay siege to an entire planetary system, should we choose to do so. I don't which, believe him. Fortunately for you, we have decided not to do today. I am undone! You are far too clever for a poor stuffy like me, oh, and thank now you. I must submit to your superior alien intellect. Yeah, about time. I guess I am not revealing any truly important secrets if I tell you that each of my species' eluder class void ships typically holds 30 stuffy crewmen. So at present, my vessel, the Star Runner, is not up to full complement due to the needs of my homeworld in their resistance against the ultimate evil. Ultimate and evil. In fact, my vessel is somewhat understandable right now, seeing as how I am the only spotter on board, which is a bit frightening, as I am sure you can understand. I completely understand. Yes, I do. How true, Captain! How true! In truth, just between us, during the past seven years, I have been quite ill at ease, and yet now I find myself enjoying your company. Oh, thank you. This I enjoy witty dialogue too. and the presence of your huge, powerful, death-dealing starship, which, being my friend, you would certainly feel compelled to use in order to save me from any hostile life forms who threatened me with death. Well, yeah. That's true. As yet, the ultimate evil remains largely unmanifest, and its powers and exact intentions are still a bit obscure, since it lurks just outside the range of even the most sensitive long-range detectors, which we feel gives conclusive evidence as to the ultimate evil's nefarious intent. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Since it was our most powerful and unforgiving master, the Orquan, who stationed us here, we knew it would be grossly stupid to disobey them completely, but we decided it would be okay to send just one ship home. We used one of our most ancient and solemn rituals, Poon Taffy, to pick the lucky ship. Then, okay. some months later, we decided that it wouldn't really hurt if we sent one more ship home. And then later we sent another, and then another. Well, you get the idea. Alas, as fate would have it, when the final ritual was performed, I, the riffle, was left here alone. For, as even the most immature in questioning knows, there must always be one spotter who puts the short top on stick. Yeah, of course Happy I know days and jubilation! I discard all prejudice and hesitations and accept and celebrate your offer of protection and your undying commitment to my well-being. Well, I, must I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Though. And make sure you understand that any other spotty ships we meet at large in the galaxy are not going to be quite so responsive to your friendly gestures as myself, since they bear more heavily the yoke of Urquan in enslavement and are also apt to talk themselves out of a line with a totally unknown alien, which I, having been left here alone, cannot do. Okay. Welcome me aboard, Captain. Welcome aboard.